Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today. Internet historian just dropped a new video literally while I'm streaming. So before anyone says pre-watched, not pre-watched. I, I have no idea what this is about. It's called Fancy Oddities. I, 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 what? Uh, let's watch this video that's probably not plagiarized because there's no way he's doing that again. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry. Sorry, sorry, dr sorry, sorry. No drama, no drama. Wholesomeness only. Let's see what we got. Video meets the criteria. <laughs> Brought to you by NordVPN. Wait, I made the plagiarism joke. He literally has the beginning of the video. This video meets the criteria of legal fair use and those YouTube's guidelines. No citation or example media herein constitutes infringement under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Yo, no plagiarism. Let's go. Based, based. This isn't pre watch Stop it. It's literally impossible for me to pre-watch this one. The following is satire and journalistic in nature. All images, media, and source places of public shiz. Public shiz. Feel free to react to these videos. Wait 48 hours from initial upload date before re-uploading to YouTube. Following is not a Cool, cool, cool. Okay, all right. Okay, it's all fancy. Oh, look at that. Oh. Look. It's oh. you. Oh, is he talking to me? He's not, he's not talking to me. He's, he, he's not talking to me. You've completed the crash course on theater and wine, have you? I have! Oh! Feeling smug, are we? I love this guy's voice. Deserving of love, perhaps? Worthy of eye contact. Okay, listen, I'm not going that, let's not get that far. Come on, come on, bro. That's cute. But there's still a lot more work to be done. Look here. These shoes are made from real Italian leather. This base, base, take that, vegans. Bag is made from the leather of real Italians. Woo! Take that, cannibals. Got them. Not impressed. I How about impressed. this fur coat? Oh, that's ugly as shit. It's made from the wolf. <laughs> what is he? I mean, he's fancy. He's fancy, I guess. Of Wall Street. Oh. <laughs> Okay, all right. The Wolf of Wall Street. That's crazy. An Xbox with the original PT demo still installed. A signed first edition okay, copy of Moby happening? Dick with its little known sequel, Moby Balls. Oh! <laughs> and so what the f where is he going with all this? Like literally what what I the title doesn't explain anything. The first minute of the video doesn't explain anything. I mean, listen, Moby Ball is very expensive, very cool. Last but not least, the squid from Squid Game. <laughs> the squid from Squid Game, that's crazy. Bro is so classy. Wow, very fancy. Don't you get it? Oddities. Weird stuff. Uh, I mean, the, the first section's on perfume. Listen, I'm gonna level with you. I kind of got distracted. <laughs> And uh, we went off topic. I don't even know what this is about anymore. Bro, he's he. <laughs> it doesn't count as pre watched if we both don't know what's going on. Okay? This isn't pre watched because I'm talking about how it makes no sense. Okay? Don't, don't try to shove words down my gullet. Here's my Netflix stand up special. It should explain everything. Yeah, right. Okay. Netflix stand up special. Ha <laughs> ha. That's gonna be a hard act to follow. That Kramer guy has some very good one-liners. But I've got some jokes lined up. Ooh, um, okay, I'm ready. Question, why is perfume so expensive? Uh, because it's a scam created by the shadow government to convince you that you smell good even though perfume smells like absolute dog water. Cause you have to pay perfume. Fucking... Wow, this really is a Netflix special the way I'm not laughing. Why do they call it cologne? Have you ever smelt one of those? Because, because uh, it's the inside of a colon. Those, it ain't great. Oh my god, he really was going the colon level. He really was gonna go. <laughs> what is he even going up? Bro, if I have a Netflix special ever, it's gonna be an hour and a half long video of me going on to the stage. And being like, all right, guys, you want to hear you want to hear a good joke? All right, let me just make sure that I'm I'm ready. I'm in the right move, and then I'll do like some stretches and be like, okay, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm gonna crack my knuckles. I'm gonna freaking crack my neck a couple of times, you know. And I'll be sitting there, I'll oh, stretch, and then I'll be like, women. 
Yeah, the credits will roll. Literally, credits will roll, and uh, all the credits will be female names. Like, just a long skew of just female names. Oh, Mike must not be working. Uh, deodorant in this market? I'd want a deodorant buy. <laughs> Is this thing on? Please okay, let me tell you the story of perfume. Okay, all right, thank God. That was wow, holy crap. Let me tell you the story of perfume because this is what this is one of my favorite dramas. Okay, do you know how perfume exists? I'm pretty sure it's British nobility uh, used to sit in like a throne the whole day to see, be seen by people, uh, and they wouldn't take bathroom breaks because it's very unladylike to take a bathroom break. So, like, the British female royalty, nobility people would sh literally, they would wear diapers and they would shit themselves all day sitting in their thing, right? It would take a year and a half to undo all their corsets and schmorsets and take off their, their goddamn pants to go go to the shitter. So, they would literally sit there and uh, uh, <laughs> they'd perfume themselves so no one smells the shit. I, that's, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is the actual lore for perfume. See, to be fancy, people wanted to- Because no one actually likes the smell. Perfume smells awful. Gives me a headache whenever I see it. To stink good. But people naturally stink bad. Boo! Boo! It was the French, not even the British? Oh! Oh, that sounds so much worse! It's science. So in the beginning, people went to the garden to find the best smelling things that they could. Here's a photo of okay. the oldest perfume bottles ever found. Oh, wow. And what's inside? Cypress. Just garden stuff that smells nice. Makes sense. But we did not just stop at that, because the story of perfume is the story of progress. Is it though? Shitting your pants? By the time Cleopatra came around, all perfume right, science- right. Yo! This Cleopatra looks nothing like that Netflix special, Cleopatra! Interesting how that worked out. Pants had really advanced. You see, Cleopatra loved perfume. In fact, it was said that she had a whole perfume factory. The old factory, I believe they called it. But this factory wasn't oh, just mashing Lord. flowers. They were using emulsifiers, adding okay. resins, okay. creating tinctures. Okay. Cleopatra's very own Chanel Number no. 1 contained cardamom, cinnamon, olive oil, and myrrh. myrrh. So we've gone from garden to pantry. And <laughs> <laughs> the Kikado avocado with the Cleopatra hair. I did not see that one coming. He loved spritzing the stuff everywhere. Supposedly even spraying it all over the sails of her ship. Oh that way God. people could smell her from miles off. As she Holy crap, bro, that sounds awful. It's like, oh, they could smell me from miles away. And everyone's like, this guy's a streamer? Okay, okay, we get it. She sailed the Nile. By the early Middle Ages, we had figured out the formula for perfume. Yes. Effectively, there are three main components. Water, alcohol, and the most important bit, the aromatic oils. Okay. And by the way, perfume and cologne are actually the same thing. That's why if you drink enough perfume, you get drunk. But in different ratios of these ingredients. Ratio. By the 1600s, they were trying all sorts of different things. Some things went well. Dude. Pine. Yo, Pine. True. What about orange? I call it new car smell. But once global trade okay. opened up, our taste became more exotic. Bro, streamers don't shower. We need, we need this. We need this. We need the old school pantry era to come back to our day. I need to sprinkle some myrrh and orange oil alcohol all over the room. Out of the pantry and into the petting zoo. For you see, it turns out that animals have been hoarding all of the most bestest uh, perfume smell. Excuse me? Wait, they made perfumes from whales? Ain't no way, dude! Else. Yes. In the olden days, a bunch of manly men would brave very rough seas in order to pull aboard <laughs> sperm whales. <laughs> And the moment you put sperm whale sperm all over you, everyone wants to mate with you. It's like pheromones, basically. Now, they would cut open the digestive tract and pluck out a secretion of bile called okay. ambergris, Ooh. or in English, grey amber. Sometimes okay. they would harvest the rest of the whale, but eventually ambergris became so valuable Wait, that's crazy. that it was simply more economical Whoa, to dump the carcass back in the ocean and collect the next batch. That's insane! 
Twenty-seven dollars a gram, bro. It's it's like gold. <laughs> what is even going on? Economical to dump the carcass back in the ocean and collect. There's a Bob's Burgers episode about it. That's crazy. I didn't know this at all. The next batch. Bro, that's horrible. Bro, vegan teacher out there thinking perfume is worse than Hitler. That's why she smells like ass. Like when you kill a racehorse for its prize-winning jizz and then just leave it there on the tracks. All right, quick science lesson, eggheads. Okay, I'm ready. Ambergris comes from the gross part of the whale. <laughs> and when the whale eats something... Did, why'd they have to vore me? Did I need to get vored for this 3D immersive experience? Just a bit of vored? And quite sharp. Let's say human bones. All right. The ambergris forms around them and protects the lining of the gut. That's, That's the ambergris cool. role. That way... As the sharp thing continues down the intestines, the whale doesn't get poked. Good shit, good but shit. But if ambergris comes from a whale's digestive tract, what does it smell like? I would think like shit, right? It's literally from the shitter of a whale. Surely not good. When it's dry, it smells kind of woody and earthy. But when it's wet, uh, okay. it smells like ass. Dude, it, it is. It's, lit it's intestine juice. It's intestine slime. Why would this smell good? How did this become perfume? But it's not actually the smell that's the useful function. What? Ambergris is a fixative. Well, so what it does is heighten and bring out the scent of other things. Bro, they put whale colon lube into your freaking perfume to heighten its scents? That's insane. These flowers? They smell all right. But add some ambergris and... Ah, that's the one. That's now, once they figured this out, they realized, oh, there's a whole bunch of things we can use a fixative for. And they got quite gross with it. They added it to food. They added whale intestine lube to food. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Just a touch. In fact, it was said that King Charles' favorite dish was ambergris on eggs. But they didn't stop there. They added it to rum. They added it to coffee. They added it to cigarettes. Are you kidding me? This was $27 a gram. How the fuck did they have... Dude, rich people, am I right? And smoked it. And they used it as an aphrodisiac. What? How do you even... I, I, don't, I don't even understand. Now, some people will say that the whale is a mammal. But that's not strictly true. It... What? Okay, I'm starting to question everything in this video. Is in fact a fish. Okay, what? <laughs> Just look at the tail. Damn. And you may have also heard that there are a lot fewer of them these days. Which, although a relief because their absence helps offset the sea level change climate whatever, we were worried that uh, we might run out. So we What is he talking about? <laughs> okay, what? He's really going on this deep lore about this and he just- A whale is in fact a fish. Scientist internet. Well, this one's not plagiarized, guys. He did not plagiarize this one. Honest on God, on God, on God, on God, on God. We said no more hunting whales for ambergris. But did that stop the perfumers? Lamau, Lamau. Did it stop the rich people from uh, raping and ravaging the land? I don't think so. No. They immediately asked, hey, do you think there are any other animals that smell kind of weird? Yes. Turns out the musk deer has. <laughs> I wonder why it's called that. <laughs> Some potential. Now we hunt the male musk deer specifically because... What the frick? Look at that musk deer. Because it has a particular gland called a musk pod, which, when dried out, looks like this. Ooh. And it uses it to mark its territory and attract mates. Musk deer ain't... <laughs> musk deer don't touch grass, but he's got the riz. Bro's got riz. Now, don't worry. Unlike ambergris, this doesn't smell like ass. Instead, it smells like ammonia and piss. Oh, oh that's so much... <laughs> that is so much better. Wow. And you just can't get a smell like that at home. So we started hunting them to the point where they were a protected species. Dude, humans, am I right? Humans, am I right? So the authority said, you have to find a different animal. Oh my god, look at the authorities out here, always ruining our fun for the sake of what? A musk deer? What, so we could stink another generation? Oh my god. Imagine being killed because you stink. Bro, it's just I show speed in society. 
So from there, they moved on to Hyrax feces. No way! Bro, they went from intestine lube to piss glands to literal shit. Humans will do anything to smell good, except for take a shower. It's crazy. The lengths we will go. One of the most feared and dangerous animals in all of Africa. Uh, okay, all right. Hyrax, bro. Dude. You know Hyraxes are actually related to horses? And it was the inspiration for the original Lynx Africa smell. Now, their feces, when dried, is called Hyraxium. <laughs> their feces, when dried, is called... Shit. Or Africa Stone. But it's not just these ones, they have other stones in Africa. Come on, guys. Uh, now, uh, the smell is fairly similar to deer musk, but... Smells like shit. <laughs> unlike the deer, the Hyrax doesn't need to be killed or disturbed for their feces. Let's go! You just follow it with your pooper scooper and you are ready to go. They're just giving it away. In fact, Hyrax even have a communal toilet. Which is used for generations, which makes it very- That's, that's even better than how Asmongold lives. He, even he doesn't use the toilet. He just uses one of his uh, empty ramen noodle cups in the, in the back of his room. That's crazy. Easy to collect up all the good stuff. Ooh. But it's not just the Hyrax. I've got other animals. Remember those- <laughs> This dude's just out here showing you different animal butts every single time. Civets from the Varus videos. <laughs> Wait, yeah. don't wash that thing's anus. Mom, mom, get the bottle, get the bottle. Turns out it's the anal gland of the civet that's actually the important smelling bit. Last Who's wow. figuring this out? Yeah, bro, bro's just going up to every animal, sniffing their ass and being like, yes, this is the one. This is the one. Oh, yes. It's like, who's the first person that decided to drink milk to, to go to a cow and be like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna pull its nipples. Why don't they use the good parts of the animal? The, it's the bacon uh, part of the beef. Uh, you know? Anyway, it's the ass that produces all the delicious musk. Oh my god! Civet paste perfumery ingredient. First impression and quick review. There's no way that's real. There's no way that's a real video on YouTube. Dude's literally smelling raw civet shit. Right? Right? Please tell me. Please tell me no one did this. Uh, Tomaso Civet. Please tell me this isn't a real video. Uh, paste. Perfumery. Oh my god, it's real! It's actually real! Bro, made an eight minute video smelling literal civet shit. I cannot believe it! Bro, I am learning so much today. Let's freaking go. That's crazy. It smells like shit. No, right, but it crazy. must be good for something because it goes for $4,000 a kilo. Okay, first of all, what the fuck? It's just 2000 Why is he, Why would he do that? Why would he say 4000 when it... Okay. But we ain't done yet. You know when you've just killed a beaver and you cut open yeah. its ripe abdomen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason it smells so good right. is because of a little gland called the castor sac which makes a yellowy scum-like substance called castorium. Bro, this is just its ball sack. You fucking... And it is used to waterproof the beaver's fur coat and also mark its territory. Oh, it is also very fragrant. Right. And you know what that means. If it smells... If it smells, it sells, baby! It, uh, because perfume does not smell good. I am telling you, perfume is a tool used by the shadow government to sell product. Perfume smells bad. I, I don't want, I don't want, this isn't controversial. Have you ever smelled perfume and be like, yes, I would eat this? No, you've never thought that because perfume smells horrible. Always does. Literally always does. You walk into like the freaking perfume store, like in a goddamn airport and you want to blow your own head off. It smells so bad. I, I will never understand it. Like a strong perfume, Lord have moisty. It sells. And in this case, castorium... Yeah, that's just testicles. Like, you are not going to tell me that this isn't a ball sack. This, this is like just a ball sack hanging from a wire. It's more kind of leathery, with smoky hints of vanilla. But unfortunately today, you're not allowed to harvest the beef. Bro, there you can't kill these animals for their sh smelly shit? Oh man. Walking around very smugly, just like the other protected animals. But you know what? We don't need them. 
because we have a synthetic version of castoreum now, and it's just as good. And you know what? We've got a synthetic for the whale, the deer, and the civet now. That's and they're used in lots of mainstream perfumes. That's crazy, bro. You don't even need to kill animals anymore. That ruins the whole fun about it. Modern day, we've got a synthetic version of practically everything. And even better, True. the advancement of synthetics has opened up a huge range of smells that were never possible to distill or capture before. Right, and the result go. is some very silly perfumes. You know that bacon bit of the pig? We got that now. Let's go. Windex smelling. Pretty much anything you can think of, really, someone has created a- Oh, the toast. Burger King perfume! I've never seen that. That's amazing. Holy crap. Fragrance of it. In some instances, we're even- Bro, literally, they will do anything. They will smell like Burger King to not take a shower. Holy shit. Beating nature herself. For example, you know those roses that you get at the florist? And then people go, ah, oh, they smell beautiful. But actually, those roses are not bred to smell good. They're so specialized for good looks, longevity, and disease resistance that they've mm -hmm. practically altogether lost their smell. Oh so often God. what the florist will do is add an additional scent to the flower post-picking. That's crazy. Holy shit. Oh my God. That's <laughs> the shadow government. <laughs> like people will smell roses and be like, Oh yes, the smell is so delightful. It just smells so natural. Oh, I love the smell of nature. Yeah, right. Synthetic nature. Everything is a lie. The world is a scam. Buy gold. And typically a synthetic rose perfume is used because it lasts longer and doesn't dry out the flower. Yep, we're just that good. And what's That's the future crazy. for perfumes? Well, I don't know. Scam. It's all a scam. Bro, just sit down and tell us the truth. But what I do know is it's going to involve some comedy gold. Anyway, where was I? What? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. My wife asked me for Chanel number no. five, and I was like, ah, not right now. I'm watching the football. What the you frick? Know, this is on, awful. Like on the television. Oh, my you God. I am going to. Get it? Cause it's channel. <laughs> Say it. If it's good enough for Kramer, it's good enough for me. <gasps> Ad time. This Christmas, she works in the big city. Private to Dart. Like you. It's time of all town. Watch the interval. You know, four bonus Nordmas months. Ads over. All right, let's go. You know, go. What do we that got? ad makes me think about the time I nearly had a wife. How? Okay. Feels like a lifetime ago now. I was in Japan. <laughs> I can't believe he does these videos. They're so cracked out. I don't understand. Pan, living the digital nomad lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a startup. No YouTuber ever has said this. Selling seashells down by the seashore. But I broke the one rule of being a digital nomad. I went outside. I got mad. What? Digitally. And that's when I saw her. It was love. <laughs> she comes out of the sea. Bro, what the frick is going on? What is this lore? Of at first sight, I remember her laugh. <laughs> her touch. Every morning, breakfast in bed. Oh, a cigarette and a monster. That's the dream. The YouTube lifestyle. But the truth was, I had no money. We couldn't live no. on love alone. No. So I left. I sought out to make my fortune. I tried so many things. I went to Shark Tank and just asked them for money. They're billionaires after all. I actually think this sucks. I'm out. And well, I bet you're wondering how I finally struck it rich. How did you strike it well, rich? truth is, I'm the guy who invented the Joe Rogan podcast. What the fuck? <laughs> Where did this come from? I am so confused. I am literally so confused. Uh, Once I became a gajillionaire, I went back to that beach to try and find her. Uh-huh. But instead, I ah! hit her with my boat. Okay. 
like it. What the fuck is even going on? I don't even understand where where is he going with Listen guys, at least this this is not plagiarized, okay? There's no way. We never found her body. What? But she had a secret. One she took to her grave uh, that I was sworn not to tell. She's not around, so Dude, she was a mermaid. Du -du 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 -du. Come on, champ, we're going to Japan. What the fuck is going on? I uh, uh, This is like some Gintama-ass family guy plot. What What is going on right now? And here's where it all begins. I like how the, the moral of the story is you can get away with murder and hide the body if you're Joe Rogan. <laughs> if you're fucking rich. In the year 2022. It's a Tuesday, probably. And local folklore researcher Hiroshi Kinoshita is looking up some fantastical animals in the, the National y in The National Book of Bestiary Hentai Anime Girls, just like we all do. Yokai Dictionary. Oh, the Yokai Dictionary. That, that's the, for normies. They, that's, that's boring shit. It's like the bestiary from Witcher, right? And he comes across a photo negative of a mermaid mummy. Bro, that's what this is. That's why he went on this whole rant. As as the fake backstory for some guy that was tracking down a mermaid. Oh my lord. Bro, pull, really? You could have just pulled out the freaking furry phone book. Uh, fur, furry, furry yellow pages and gotten away with it. You did not need, bro. Look, he gave the mermaid attack stats. Vulnerable to nets, chum, bears. What? Why are you like this? Oh my god, he says in Japanese. Upon seeing the mermaid, he knows that he must track it down. Makes sense. He must form a team. Researchers, assemble! So he gets together the best damn crew oh that he can from the- Oh my god, all the Pokemon devs. University of Science and Arts at the Okiyama Prefecture. And he plans he to track doing? down the mermaid mummy, yes. wherever it has escaped to. Now, it doesn't take him long to figure out that it's being held at the Inuin Temple in Asakuchi. You know the oh one. Oh my god. So he, yeah, of course, obviously. He struts up to the sacred building. All right, and I there see. at the back of the temple is a fireproof safe. And There's no way he found the mermaid in a safe. What is even going on right now? Inside of that is an old wooden box. Okay. And inside the old wooden box was the mermaid. That was it? That was literally it. It used to be on display, but it was put away in this box for the last 40 years to prevent it from deteriorating. What is going on, bro? Are you kidding me? It's like they didn't go diving to find it. It was just in a box that they had all along. We found it. We found a real one. But where did it come from? Well, alongside the mermaid was a note that they- oh, 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 They're just like, they're like, yeah, it's a mermaid, you can tell, because it's a shriveled monkey-looking thing. Dated back from 1903, and it said, A dried human fish, aka Ningyo, was caught almost 300 years ago, over in the seas of Tosa. Okay. It was then dried out, and taken to Osaka. Okay. And from there, it was passed around to many different people until it arrived at the temple. Now, the Ningyo- okay. <laughs> They found a mummified seal, and then they're like, Okay. <laughs> Alright. You have an important history in Japan, and sightings of these half-fish, half-human creatures have cropped up all across the country. It's kind of wild how how many different cultures have mermaids, right? Like Greeks, uh, the, the freaking Jap- the Japanese. Like, these are cu cultures that had, like, no- cultural overlap but still you have mermaids in all these cultures it's wild kinoshita himself had personally tracked down 13 of them all across oh japan my God, that's crazy these are all just that's fake okay mummified fish don't look like this i'm i you i will never believe that usually kept in museums and temples However, what you might not know is that traditionally they have been associated with bad omens. No! You fuck a fish one time and all of a sudden all the omens are bad. Aye. And everyone knows the infamous tale of Yao Bikuni. Yeah, obviously everyone knows the Yao Bikuni. Uh, you want to remind me just like to, as a freshener for everyone else? 
No one knows the tale, just say it, man. But I'll recite it to you just in case. There we go, there's our boy. <laughs> Let's go. Yao Bakuni, the fish fucker. So the story is that one day, a poor fisherman catches the biggest fish of his life. Oh my God. It was a strange looking fish, and its head was almost human-like. <laughs> it was a strange looking fish. It looked strangely like his dad. But he brought the fish home and invited all of his friends and family to come over for a feast to celebrate his largest catch. All right. you know, he's got his arms stretched out like this. He's like, it was this big. No, it was this big. I swear it was. <laughs> God, dude, I love the, I love the, the freaking goofy editing. It's this big. During dinner, one of the guests sneaks into the kitchen to see just how big it was. This big? I can't believe it. And he discovers that it is actually a Ningyo. Oh no, he says in perfect Japanese. <laughs> oh no, he fucked the fish. Now he quickly warns the other guests, don't eat it. And he warns them just in time. Teishi. They've got their fork like right up to their mouth. Teishi eating that. Teishi, don't do it. They throw all their food away. Bro, I would have eaten that shit. That's, that looks awesome. Let's just have some rice and drink the night away. Okay, so they do. And they have a lovely evening. Okay. However, Dude, this is one crazy. very dishonorable guest no! decided to sneak. I oh, decided to fuck the fish. I knew it was happening! A bit of the meat out of the trash and put it in his pocket. He then goes home drunk okay. and falls asleep. He didn't eat it. But when he woke up the next morning, he checks his pockets and. <sighs> no! The delicious fish piece is gone! No! Turns out, in the night, his daughter had been rummaging around in his pockets. Look, <laughs> Dude, the worst daughter in the world. <laughs> Literally world's worst daughter. For treasure. And she found the meat from his pocket. And she was such a greedy guts that she decided to no. eat it then and there. The Bro, listen, guys, I think the, the moral of the story is like, if you're gonna rummage through your dad's pockets and find a piece of fish in there, you don't eat it. Don't eat your dad's pocket fish. You don't know what that was used for. You, you don't... You, what? Father was terrified for his daughter. But she didn't seem to be sick. Do you feel weird at all? And she gave birth to a fish. Shaking her. He decided not to tell her anything. Maybe it'll all be okay. However, from that day forward, the daughter never aged. Oh That's my right. God, bro. She remained a young adult forever. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that that entire room could have become immortal, but they didn't? Because one guy thought it looked a little too human-like. She eventually went on to marry. But as her husband got older, she stayed the same age. Oh my God. Eventually, her father got old and died. And soon enough, did her husband too. Everyone she ever knew was getting older and dying, but she remained the same age. She was immortal. Eventually, at age 120, Bro. she decided to shave her head and become a Japanese nun. She traveled the I mean, I guess, sure. country, planting trees as she went, and she did this for 800 years. Bro, what the frick folklore story is this supposed to be? Oh my god. But eventually, she grew tired. You know what? I'm tired of living. Bro, this do be for some free rin shit. She entered a cave in her hometown of Obama. <laughs> There's no way, right? <laughs> okay. And she was determined to never come out again. Yes, yes. She begged and prayed for the curse to end, but it never did. She sat in that cave for so long that she turned to stone. I... <laughs> what? And today at the Kuinji Temple. She was so immortal, she turned to stone. That's the worst ending. Literally, what is going on? In Obama remains the cave that Yao Bakuni entered. Mm -hmm. People have been into that cave to check whether she's still in there but nothing was found. However, That's a exactly. stone statue of her resides at the entrance. And colloquially, it is called the Bar Rock Obama. So we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh my god, the original Barack Obama. That's crazy. That's wild. Chat, don't believe it. Don't believe it. That... <laughs> don't believe it. Back with Hiroshi. He asked the right. Inuin temple if he could borrow the Nino. Look, let me do a little CT scan on it, right? And they agreed. Hiroshi hands the Nino to a team of scientists right, and they right. get to work. They do their tests. That's beep, great. beep, boop. Control plus scan on the keyboard. Oh and here are the results. It's stage four cancer. No! <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's not going to make it. The old mummy fish is not going to survive. Oh, mummy monkey, no. No, but really, turns out the Nino dates back to the 1800s. The Boo. note that said it was from the 1700s was wrong. Oh. Its body is made from cloth and cotton, wrapped in pufferfish skin. The oh. tail was made from a croaker. I don't know what that is. What is can we show that on the screen? It's a fish. <laughs> it's a fish. With the mouth of a different fish and the hair of a mammal. And they can see that there's a metal nail in its back. Wow, bro. What a freaking scam. They scammed you, bro. You got just scammed. Oh, my God. It's invented tools. It's invented tools. Bro, dude, it's obviously, it's obviously part fish part human, part metal. It's the full metal alchemist! I. The forensic analysis and the construction materials in its back did cast some doubt over its authenticity. Some doubt? Really some doubt? But you gotta believe in something, damn it. Aye. The Robocop of the sea. As promised, the Nino was returned to the Enuen Temple. Where they continue to worship it because full metal alchemist. It needs to be worshipped for some reason. Where it still lives today. But where, oh where, did my mermaid go? Alright, dude. <gasps> it's her! You're, oh you're God, back! Oh my God, that's crazy. You know what, I, I kind of missed you. And... Wow. What the hell is that? Daddy. Ah! <laughs> yeah, big brother! <laughs> Bye -bye. You know what? I never did find her again. I think these things are a big myth. Yeah, all right. All right, dude. All right. Nice. That was a good part. Honestly, that was good shit. Yo, Yu-Gi-Oh! We're here on the ancient streets of Cairo. Egypt, baby! I love how like, Yu-Gi-Oh is just Egypt. Egypt, the, the exploration. Air is our destination. Oh, shit. In these triangles, the greatest luxury that all the elites crave... Oh, but no, no, not not that. The the second most thing <laughs> after uh, whores, uh, electricity. The mummies. Boo! Boo! You can find them in. Dude, I really wanted him to get into the. Uh, when I saw Egypt, I got excited for a second because like there's this whole um, uh, conspiracy theory that the Egyptians were actually able to use electricity in ancient times. Like, the, the way the uh, pyramids are built or something, and I really was hoping he was getting into that. In these tombs, and there's only ever, like, one dude guarding them. But before we take, we must understand. Mummification started over 5,000 years oh ago. And they were first discovered by the Europeans in the 15th century. But the legend goes, the locals knew about them even earlier than that. <laughs> well, yeah, because they, <laughs> they were doing it, okay. It's an elaborate process, but essentially, you're drying the person out, turning them into a human salami. Yes, sir. All right, so when the Europeans... Hey, as easy as that, he explained the whole system in three seconds. Okay, dude. ...found all these mummies. What do you think they did? Got uh, them open. They, they tried to make some good-ass money uh, and by uh, putting them in museums, and they did some research on the side, and then that's it. Put it in a museum. Easy. Right? Wrong. Wrong! They had sex with the mummies! They used these mothers for everything. And everybody wanted them. What do you mean they used them for everything? Well, fancy people would take whole mummies and show them off to their friends at fancy dinners. That's awful. Oh my god, dude. That... 
Bro, there's a lot of things you could do with a dead person, but there ain't no way they put them on the dining room table. That's unhinged. Holy crap. To really show off the owner's wealth, they would sometimes unwrap them too. Ooh, scandalous. They were used as paint. They used mummies as paint? That's fucked up. They call this mummy brown, by the way. Oh. They were used as fertilizer. Oh. oh my god, bro. Why would you do that? This was a person. That is that is wildly disrespectful for some reason. Oh man. Talk about supercharging your soil. They were I even did. consumed. Don't mind if I do. No, not like this. By grinding them up into powder and taking them like a herbal supplement. Homies, that's cannibalism. I, I don't know why you... Somehow, I, there is some divine force that stands above my streams where every single stream needs to have cannibalism mentioned at least once. I don't know how it happened, but brother, every single stream has the cannibalism segment. There's always a vor segment and there's always an incest segment. I don't know how I could never escape the big three like that. Which they called Mumia. But with such high demand for your mom, after a while, they began to run out of stock. No! Uh-oh. You can't just replace that shit. Or can you? They were becoming rarer and rarer to find. They were being gobbled off the face of the earth. Oh my god. So the authorities passed a bunch of laws to- Bro, this is the same. <laughs> no hunting rhinos, elephants, monkeys, and dead people. Protect mummies from becoming altogether extinct. These are the last two of their species, and they're both male, but they won't mate. No. No. But the Okay, fuck you. <laughs> Honestly, fuck you, bro. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you bitch, you stupid fucking I didn't pre-watch this. It literally just came out while I was Okay. Mummy is much like the Tasmanian tiger. What? Every once in a while, one will just kind of show up and prove that they're okay. not altogether extinct oh, the year 2013 the location Difus in northwest uh, germany Difus. The, the best place to find an egyptian is in german in germany am i right guys we are at the kettler household owned by grandfather kettler who is now dead Boom. but he had a son lutz kettler and lutz doesn't seem suspicious at all until they found the mummy. And Lutz Kettler also had a son, Alexander Kettler. And they are both there at the house. After a rainy day, there was a leak in the roof. So 10-year-old Kettler gets up into the attic. Oh my god, Grandpa, is that you? To explore. You know, have a bit of a look around. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Old antiques. <laughs> yeah, sure. Photographs. And, oh, some old roof tiles. Those will be useful. So he goes over to the roof tiles and, hmm, behind them is that a grandpapa? something strange. A box. A mystery box. Oh my now the kid God. is smart and he's seen Jumanji, so he knows not to touch the box. <laughs> he's seen Jumanji, the end. And instead, go tell his dad. Now the dad drags the box into the center of the room. Uh, okay. And he opens it. It was Dio. Dio was sitting in there all along. And inside... A smaller box. No! Why does it have Egyptian writing on it? Bro mummified his dad and put Egyptian symbols on... Oh my god. But it's very curious because it is covered in hieroglyphs. That's crazy. So Lutz crosses his fingers hoping nothing supernatural will happen. And he opens the inner box. Inside... Is a mummy! Oh okay. my god. Did not see that one coming. Uh, but there's more. There's also two smaller boxes. Okay, that's fucked up. <laughs> you see, this one's Hitler, and this they never found him. And this one's grandpa. And uh this I don't know who this is. I don't know. This is some guy I hit with my car, but we got away with it. One contained a death mask, and the what? other a canopic jar. Alright, so we might have a death oh, mask and the uh, death masks are typically made in the likeness of the person mummified. They were thought to protect the soul of the person in the afterlife. Bro, these these people weren't ancient Egyptians. This is like modern day Germany. What is going on? Canopic jars were containers used to hold the organs of the deceased. Ooh, which are removed during the mummification process. Yeah, they would embalm the bodies to so they wouldn't rot. 
Uh, the jars are buried to the body would be this good. Dude, this is just, this is just how JoJo starts. JoJo's part seven starts with this. The other, a canopic jar. All right, so he might have a dead body in the house now. That's cringe. So naturally, he calls the authorities. Wait, the what? He didn't know it was there? Okay, bro. At least show up and I'll- Great grandpa was just a grave robber? Like, huh? Ask some questions. Lutz then explains a little bit of backstory. He remembers that in the 1950s, his father went to Derna in Libya. There, he acquired a chest and had it shipped back home. He remembers a conversation. <laughs> and he never looked into this? ...about it. But Grandfather Kettler insisted that it was a replica. Das ist ein replica, son, son, son. Not a real mummified person. Now, at this point, the police did not think it was a real body, but it was worth getting it scanned just in case. Oh my God, so he loaded amazing. it up in his station wagon, and off he went to the Berlin Archaeological Institute. That's actually insane. Oh, my God. He acquired it, bro. This is the best way to get rid of the evidence ever. Now, they agreed to do a scam, and so they're fiddling with buttons and dials and stuff, and it's fake, right? It's fake? Well, here's where things get a little more dramatic. I have a feeling I know. <laughs> Results inconclusive. Road trip. What? There is a fully formed skeleton here. Now that is unusual for a fake. Yeah, you can say that. Often a fake will just be shaped like a person, then filled with sticks and cloth and rubbish. However, it got even stranger. They found that all of the bones were wrapped in some sort of metal plating what? or foil. Next, they looked at the skull, and that's where things were the most odd. Is that a key in the head? It was very realistic. Its teeth had roots. Okay. Its form was more intricate oh, than fuck. the typical fake. It oh, also boy. had- Bro, you just freaking go into your- It's Wolverine! Bro, you just go into your- Into your attic, you find a box, and it's like an actual mummy, and you don't know how it got there. It's like, oh! A laurel, but even more notably, there was an arrowhead lodged in the eye socket. Yeah, bro, Grandpa killed somebody. Bro, Grandpa murdered someone and mummified the corpse. Um, yeah, and, and now he's dead, and now he's not going to be punished for his crime. Um, bro, this, this is either how JoJo's Bizarre Adventure starts or how this man's legacy ends. Now that is very unusual for a fake. Hold on, I got more evidence to do. So they're doing more tests and stuff. All right, we've- <laughs> they, they DJ the mummy. Carbon tested the linen wraps. What's the verdict? Well, those are from the 1900s. Now the- <laughs> Bro, they found a stand arrow in his head, bro, dude. Guy. <laughs> okay, um, gra Grandpa's a murderer. I think that we could agree. Uh, I feel like this is, uh, let's not be surprised that- Yep, 1900s, Grandpa killed somebody, okay, listen. The plot is thickening. We have a supposed fake mummy, but with a very realistic skull. Yeah, perhaps that he got in the 1950s. Yeah, all right, we know what happened right before the 1950s in Germany. Am I right, guys? Murdered by an arrow to the head and bandages that date to the modern day. Mm. That presents a new problem, because it's not unheard of for people to do a murder in the modern day. And then... Hide the body! And then cover things up by disguising the body as an ancient artifact. For it- But then don't leave it in your attic, bro! <laughs> Listen, <laughs> dude, if you're gonna do it, you get rid of it. You put it somewhere, you don't keep it. Oh my god. Example, in the year 2000, there was yeah. a man who claimed he found the mummy of an ancient Persian princess, the daughter of Xerxes. Oh my god, is that Rodugeny, the daughter of Xerxes? However, when they examined the body, they found it was, in fact, a potential murder victim oh from 1996 who died from bludgeoning. All right, so the police now actually have to get involved, and it's about to get even more complicated. So they confiscate the body, and they do their own tests, and the results... Th <laughs> oh, God, that's the worst meme ever. This time, no! so... No! No! Nope, this thing is 2,000 years old. What? It's not fake at all. It's ancient. Uh, what? What? So how, how could it be ancient? Did Grandpa rewrap an ancient mummy? Eventually the experts all get together and go, okay, this is dumb. Let's take it to Eppendorf University and have it properly tested and not just tested, 
crack the thing open like a delicious kinder surprise. Yummy. So this new set of experts gets to work. And when they open up the mummy... The curse is released! Nothing happens. All right, remember how we said that the bones were covered in a special type yeah, of yeah, foil yeah, or... Silver foil. They're just silver foiled uh, an, old, an old guy. Metal plating? Right. Well, it turns out the scientists didn't quite get that right. Instead, the bones were sprayed with a metallic chemical that prevented x-rays from going through. The what? bones were made from plastic. Wow, dude, that's crazy! Or at least, the body was. What? Turns out, the skull is real. Okay, what the fuck, this guy's messed up, holy shit. Yes, a real skull, and not from an ancient mummy, but from a 20th century man. However, I wonder what happened in Germany during those years. Like, did anything, you know, crazy happen in the 1940s in Germany? Like, listen, I could be wrong, but I remember some, some crazy shit going on back then. It was not a murder. Oh. This skull is from a cadaver, and it was medically prepared for educational purposes. What? And what about- Dude went to med school, shot an arrow into the eye of a cadaver, kept the skull, mummified that shit? I don't- That arrowhead. Well, it turns out that that's from a children's toy. Someone just popped that in the eye socket as a joke. So I, finally- I am so confused. What is even going on? The mystery was solved. It's just a plastic skeleton with a real dead guy's head put on it. Wait, how does that solve the mystery? Yeah, where's the body? Where's the, I guess in the, in the med school or whatever? Anyway, so Lutz was satisfied that the whole thing was fake and not a murder victim. Oh, let's put that back in the attic, he said very Germanly. But then, ah, eine bitte? Was ist das? He says, another box? No, <laughs> no, dude, there's no shot. The Book of the Dead? Get out of here. Well, that sounds like a fun read. Right, so Lutz starts reading the ancient Egyptian owl. Hey, this isn't real, right? At this point, bro, there's no way. Loud. Anaxunamun, Emotep, Brendan Fraser. And what happened next will shock you and make for a very good thumbnail. What was that? All right. Hey there, champ. Yu-Gi-Oh! Brendan Fraser Suzuki Takahashi. You're probably wondering why I'm out here on this park bench. I am. Why are you not inside? You're a YouTuber. You shouldn't be touching grass. <laughs> Sometimes, I just come to see the autumn leaves. Wow. Winter will be here soon. Winter is coming. Dust in the wind. <laughs> Truth is, sport, I have a highly, highly contagious respiratory disease. No! I won't be around much longer. The Dust. fallen leaves tell a story. Bro, we have to make the same crushing animation to crush two separate leaves. It's in the wind. That's crazy. I'm like Willy Wonka from that movie. And you're like that ugly kid from the Willy Wonka movie who gets all his stuff. Or the Oompa Loompa, I don't know, I haven't seen it. The point is you're so close to being fancy. I can feel it. Oh. There's just one lesson left to learn. Oh shit. <coughs> I'm ready. <coughs> anyway, speaking of ancient Egypt, here's this ancient what? Egyptian gun. Yo, it, that's crazy. Franz Ferdinand, what are you doing here? Of course, he's not the real Franz Ferdinand. He's what is even going on? This is, all, this is a whole fucking schizo dream, this video. The mummy. Now, the thing about the ancient Egyptian gun is that it's very sense- Uh-oh. I hit your congratulations for being somewhat fancy cake. Oh, that's funny. Come on, Mr. Ferdinand. We've got to clean this up before the Park Services Commission hears about this, and they make another complaint. Right, we're almost done with the series, and then what it's- What was that? What was that? Back to the usual content. So in case you missed it, there's also drinking on Incognito. Bro, all, uh, that, that was some fancy ass video, honestly. That was pretty fancy. A new story mode out next week. Let's go. And if you like fancy, that's great. But if you don't like fancy, don't worry, it's not forever. I like fancy. This was a good video. Fancy oddities. The third fancy video. 
Dude, Internet Historian makes some good shit. Like, he's he's an entertaining fellow. Uh, this this was a good video all in all. Uh, yeah, but anywho, that was a really good video. That was a really good video. I liked it. I, I feel like I actually learned a lot, which I uh, is cool. Not not so much about mummies, but that Japanese folklore has ta taught me anything. You should be uh, eating as many, I don't know, freaking mermosi as you can. Eat all that mermosi, brother. If you made it to the end, click one of these two videos, which also will definitely get me cancelled. See you live on Game. Stay weird, man.